Here we are. Good evening. Good evening. Good, good evening, evening to everyone. We are uh, the Gallman, uh, Pastor Winfrey Gallman Jr., and this is leading lady Patricia Gallman, and we're so honored to be with you tonight on this night that we celebrate our watch night service, and uh, we say grace and peace to all of you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We hope you had a wonderful and awesome uh, Saturday, all day this Saturday. And I want to let you know at first the music that we're playing, we do not own the rights to the music that we're playing, uh, but we just thought it was an expression of how we feel about the Lord and how God has blessed us, not only as a family, but as a church ministry at our Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church. So again, welcome. Uh, we hope you enjoy our broadcast. Of course, we're not at Mount Calvary. We're here in our home, but we represent Mount Calvary to all of our members and all of our covenant our partners. We say grace and peace unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, thank you for joining us. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're not at the sanctuary tonight, but we are elated that you have decided to join us on this watch night service. We are coming live again from our home. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome into our home. Amen. Amen. We're playing a song now, and I think Patricia, she can turn it up a little bit. Uh, it's called Do Not Pass Me By by uh, Ricky Diller. Ricky Diller. Ricky Diller. And it says, Lord, do not pass me by. Why on others? Thou are calling, do not pass me by. And again, we don't own the rights to it, but we thought it was a wonderful song for a, a wonderful watch night service. Those who are listening, you can clap your hands, you can wave your hands, you can give God praise. You don't have to be in the church. You can be in your living room, in your den, in your home, in your kitchen. Savior, Savior, here. Like me, you don't want the Lord to pass you back. I'm in my own praise tonight. Amen. So this time to call and we can raise going to a new year. So I tell you. When you think about the year, everything that we've gone through in 2022, long time ago in the church, and our church services were songs like we were playing. The people would stand on their feet, they would clap their hands, mm -hmm. they couldn't help themselves because they knew God had been good to them. God healed them, yeah. saved them, liberated them. So there's no time for the church to keep quiet now, but it's time to give God the praise and call his name Savior. I want you to listen to me and hear my humble cry. Yeah. While on others thou are calling, do not pass me by. Amen. Amen. At this time, would you bow with me uh, for a word of prayer? And then we're going to have our scripture by uh, Patricia. Eternal and gracious God, we thank you for this day. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for your life-giving spirit. Yes. Father, we just thank you for opening our eyes and allowing us to see a wonderful and awesome Saturday. Yes, Lord. The last Saturday on the last day of 2022. Yes. Lord, you have brought us from a long way. Yes, Lord. Father, through the hills and through the valleys, through the crooked paths that you've made straight for us. God, you've led us and you guide us along the way. 
And for that, we say thank you. Thank you Father, we thank you for the covering of grace and mercy. Father, we thank you for impregnating us with the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. We understand that there are many in 2022 that we had to uh, say see you later to God because they're no longer with us. Yes, Lord. But Father, there were many eulogies we had to preach. There were mm -hmm. many hospital visits and home visits business that we had to do. Yes, Jesus. But Father, you have still blessed us. Yes, you have, Lord. You have kept us. Yes. You have covered us. Yes, Jesus. And for that, we give your name the glory and the honor. Yes. Now, Father, as we press toward 2023, mm -hmm. we ask that you would be with us to guide us. Yes, Lord. Lord, we don't know what it holds, but we know who holds it. Yes, And Jesus. that's you, Father. Yes, Lord. And so, Father, we ask that you would progress our ministry at Mount Calvary. Yes, Jesus. All of our covenant partners that watch us time yes. after time, God, God, help them to understand that they can't make it in 2023 without you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God, and help us to realize that uh, when 2023 gets here, God, you're the same God that took care of us in 2022. Yes, Jesus. Bless us and keep us now in Jesus' name. Yes. We offer this your service prayer. And all of the people of God said amen. 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 I'm going to be reading that scripture tonight. And I'm going to be coming from Proverbs, the third chapter, the fifth through the sixth verse. Reading from the New International Version. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. I'm going to read that one more time. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Amen. Amen. I'm also going to be reading tonight or this evening the purpose of watch night. Uh, when Pastor asked me to read this, I, I read over it a little bit today and so much meaning. So I want you to really listen to what I'm saying and see if you can put yourself into the place of what these slaves, some of our ancestors were feeling. On the night of December 31st, 1862, Enslaved and free American, African Americans gathered, many in secret, to ring in the new year and await the news that Emancipation Proclamation had taken effect. Just a few months earlier, on September 22, 1862, President Abraham Lincoln issued the executive order that declared enslaved people in the rebelling Confederate states legally free. However, the decree would not take effect until the clock struck midnight at the start of the new year. At the start of a new year. We're getting ready to start a new year. The occasion known as Watch Night or Freedom Eves marks when African Americans across the country watched and waited for the news of freedom. Today, Watch Night Service is an annual New Year's Eve tradition that includes the memory of slavery and freedom, reflections on faith, and a celebration of community and strength. The proclamation of emancipation by the President of the United States took effect January the 1st, 1862. Watch night service is rooted in African American religious traditions, even today. During the first watch night, many enslaved African Americans gathered. They gathered to pray, worship, sing, and dance. Can you not see us doing that this evening? Maybe not in the Gowman's home, but some of you have probably experienced that worship. And this isn't in my paper to read, but I can just think on the many years that I myself 
have participated in watch night service where we would pray, we would worship, the kids would sing, the choirs would sing, we would dance. Oh, what a time, what a time. At that time, enslaved black people could find little respite from ever-present surveillance, even in practicing their own faith. White enslavers feared that religion, which was often used to quell slavery resistance, could incite the exact opposite if practiced without observation. They wrote laws that restricted worship and large gatherings, such as that in the 1848 Georgia Slave Code. Despite these laws, enslaved people sought to exercise their own religious customs, including Christianity, Islam, and faith practices reflective of the homes from which they were stolen. They convened at praise houses on plantations or secretly gathered in the woods, where they practiced their faith under the protective cover of the trees and brushes and what became known as hush harbors. As Charlotte Martin, a formerly enslaved woman from Florida, recounted, the plantation owner would not permit them to hold religious meetings or any other kind of meetings, but they frequently met and they frequently met in secret to conduct religious services. Charlotte's own brother was beaten to death for participating in such secret worship meetings. But enslaved people, they persisted in their faith practicing as forms of resistance and freedom. This spirit is still visible in watch night services today. The watch night services typically begins around 7 p.m. on December 31st and lasts through midnight as faith leaders guide congregants in praise and worship. Many congregants across the nation bow in prayer minutes before midnight hour as they sing out, Watchmen, watchmen, please tell me the hour of the night. In return, the minister replies, it is three minutes before midnight. It is two minutes before midnight. It is one minute before the new year. And it is now midnight. Freedom has come to bless this transaction into a new year. Amen. 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 Wow. You know, just listening to that and the history of our culture and all the blood, sweat, and tears that it took in order for us to have the opportunities we have today. And when you listen to the history of the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863, it, it should give us joy that even enslaved and free slaves were set free. And they counted down like we're doing uh, mm -hmm. tonight as we're headed into 2023. And that's the reason for all of us to celebrate. Uh, because they were set free, uh, we are here today. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, God has set us free uh, through his son, Jesus Christ, who by Carrier's death at, Cal at Calvary and resurrection on the third day morning has, uh, has set us free. And we should celebrate. We shouldn't Amen. hold back on God. And the reason that Patricia and I wanted to do this uh, tonight was because we know that many of you have had your personal experiences uh, in your own lives. Many of you have experienced things you cannot even talk about. Mm -hmm. But what we're asking for you to do tonight, and you don't have to tell us what the situation was, or maybe is, but if you'll just type in a uh, a small testimonial mm -hmm. of the goodness of the Lord in your life. Mm -hmm. And let us celebrate that just like our foremothers and forefathers did in 1863. Mm -hmm. We want to celebrate with you. Uh, we don't have a choir here tonight. Uh, we'll do that next year. Uh, we don't have a church. Uh, we're not in a, in a church building. We're in our home. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't stop you from typing in and just 
even if you say thank you, Lord, for mm -hmm. being good to me and my family and my church. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I was not in good health earlier this year, but I'm healthy now. You ought to type in a testimony. We're going to give you a few minutes uh, to do that. And, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to give you a small humbling. And then we're going to have an ending prayer for all of you. And then we're going to wish you a happy new year. And we look forward to seeing all of our members and you and some of our covenant partners mm -hmm. at church tomorrow where we're going to really celebrate uh, the journey we're about to take in the new year. So go ahead and type the testimonials in. We're going to give you a chance to do that. Uh, maybe Patricia has a testimony she wants to give. Man, I have so many. I don't even know where to start. You know, I'm sitting here wiping my eyes and um, I didn't tell Pastor that I was going to share this, but I just want to share this testimony, um, most of you probably know that I travel for work and I work in healthcare. So this past two years, I've been in Houston working. And uh, thank God that he always knows what's best for us. Even when we're not thinking about what's going to happen, he already knows what's going to happen before it happens. So on last Wednesday, um, I was coming home early, and I typically have a routine when I'm traveling. I'm pretty much A, B, C, D, E, and I do the same routine every day. So I stopped to get gas on my way to work on Wednesday morning before flying home for the Christmas holiday. And typically when I'm traveling, I have all of my traveling goods, my traveling bag, my passport, my ID. I keep it in the car with me because I typically have to go into work to the hospital before I go to the airport. So on last Wednesday, God just told me not to put my normal travel bag in the front seat. For two years, I've put that traveling bag in the front seat. And this morning, God told me not to. I didn't question and didn't understand why. So I put my traveling bag in the trunk of the car. I put my work bag, <laughs> a little laughter, with my lunch, my tuna, my crackers, my change purse. I left that in the front seat of the car. And I had talked to Pastor right before I got ready to get out to get some gas. I went in the store, I paid for my gas, and um, I had prepaid, so I had $5 left over. I had paid 20 and I ran back in the gas station to get my $5, and I came back out, and I got back in the car, and I got ready to call my husband and say, hey, I'm back in the car, headed on to work, and I couldn't find my phone. So, of course, the first thought was, my phone had fallen under the seat of the car. So I'm looking under the car, looking under the seat of the car. And I looked up and I said, oh my God, somebody stole my work bag. So then it dawned on me. I guess that I had left the door unlocked when I ran back in the gas station. But I tell you, God is so good. He is just so good. Even though my, my work bag was stolen with the, the lunch in it, the cell phone in it, I couldn't do anything but to praise him and say, God, I thank you because the person that took it, maybe they needed food, maybe they needed the $15 that was in my chain purse. I don't know what it was, but I wasn't angry. I wasn't sad. I couldn't cry. All I could do was stand there in the parking lot and just say, God, I thank you because it could have been my life. It could have been totally different. But through it all, I counted it as joy. And there was a lady in the parking lot that had saw the guy that had taken my bag. And she came over and she said, Sister, I just want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. And then she invited me to their church there. So again, I just thank God, just wanted to share that. We may not always understand or may not always see what's going to happen. But I thank God that he's a God that is everywhere. And then the two years and years before that I've been traveling, I just thank him for going with me. I thank him for protecting me. I thank him for taking me to and from and getting me there safely. 
I thank him for my family, my husband, my son, my sister, my mom, my brothers. And I'm just excited about what he's going to do in 2023. Amen. 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 And we thank uh, Lena Lady, Patricia. I remember that story that happened about last week about her getting her, uh, her personal stuff stolen. But she's still here. So, and I'm glad she's still here. <laughs> I, I, we could always get another handbag or another phone, which we did. And uh, but she's still here, so keep typing in your testimonies. Mm -hmm. Don't you know? It's the confession and the profession <clears throat> is what God loves, and so you can't just mm -hmm. keep what God has done to you to yourself. Somebody else needs to hear what God has done for you. Amen. Because salvation has never been about the individual, and that's good. Mm -hmm. But salvation has always been about us sharing it with someone else. So now is not the time to do what we did in 22 and keep quiet on God. Mm -hmm. In 2023, let's make a commitment that we're going to share. So type in your testimonies. Patricia's not the only one that has a testimony. Mm -hmm. There's somebody out there that I'm watching right now on Facebook <laughs> that has a testimony about the goodness of God in your life, in mm -hmm. the life of your family. Uh, my testimony is real quick is I thank God for my family, my wife, uh, my mother, my sisters, brother-in-laws, nieces, and nephews, my stepson, Zach. I thank God for all my mother-in-law. I thank God for all of those people he has put in my orbit. I thank God for Mount Calvary because through it all, Mount Calvary, you know, for almost three years, we didn't know how Mount Calvary was going to progress uh, during the uh, worldwide pandemic. Mm -hmm. But look at where we are, Mount Calvary. Mm -hmm. Look at where we are. You know, we don't have as much as others may have or may think they have, but what we have is good enough for us. Mm -hmm. And we thank God for all of our members, all of our covenant partners that have been so faithful with us. And greater mm -hmm. things are going to come to Mount Calvary because of the faithfulness of the people that sit in at her congregation. So, just keep us in your prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, pray for those who are less fortunate than we are. Mm -hmm. Give your prayers out to those who are in the cold and, and are needy. And God will return that back to you. Yes. And with that said, I just wanted to not prolong the time, but God gave me a, a word to give to you tonight. And I want it to be a blessing to, to you as well as a, a blessing to all of our covenant partners and a a blessing to my home. And when I was doing some studying, uh, I came up with the Old Testament prophet uh, Jeremiah. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, and as we head into 2023, hopefully this homily will be a blessing to you. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 14 through 16. Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 14 through 16. And from the New International Version, it reads, Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. Verse 15. They keep saying to me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it be fulfilled. The last verse, verse 16. I have not run away from being your shepherd. You know I have not desired the day of despair. What passes my lips is open before you. That's the word of God for the people of God. I just want to talk to you for a brief moment tonight and certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit from this thought. Healing in a time like this. Healing in a time like this. I want you to say it to yourself while you're listening to me. Healing in a time like this. During the season of COVID-19, people worldwide shared common knowledge of our human frailty. But unfortunately, these times prove that it does not matter how smart we are, how smart we think we are. It doesn't matter how rich we are nor how poor we are, a crisis arises that we do not have immediate answers on how to fix it. 
We can promote new theories. We can develop new untested medicines. But this pandemic has exposed our limited knowledge and understanding. Brothers and sisters, science has revealed an illness problem. Unfortunately, people have suffered and will continue to suffer in 2023. The answer is this. After the coronavirus comes and shatters our everyday family life, community life, and church life, the question is, what do we do? What do we do? Who do we turn to heal our diseases? What will the church's reaction be in 2023? Mm -hmm. The beginning of the worldwide pandemic stripped us, all of us, of everything, brothers and sisters, that we call normal. During the pandemic, there was unemployment, where people were losing or have lost their jobs on massive scales. Uh, it eroded or it interrupted our social gatherings. And in social gatherings, that's where we create interpersonal relationship as we socialize with one another. It interrupted our education and our schools of higher learning where we learned to become an asset to society instead of a liability, where children could not go to school and people could not go to college like they normally would. It interrupted our social community and meeting places where we fellowship together to discuss ways of making society a better place. The pandemic stripped us of sporting events where we would go cheer for our favorite teams. The pandemic stripped us of family vacation time where we can have fun and relaxation with our family and our friends. The pandemic stripped us of our church worship experiences the meeting place, the sacred place of the saved and the unchurched. In 2023, brothers and sisters, maybe some people will continue to do the routine and think it's a hoax. Perhaps some will never believe in a higher power and are restricted only to science. And maybe some will know that there is a God who can heal and a God who can save. Guess what? The choice is ours. For approximately three years, the news concerning COVID-19 has changed daily. Mm -hmm. Yes, various true and false information has lingered from the beginning. It's like a roller coaster going up and down. One day they say it's this, and the next day they say it's something else. Yeah. However, dear brothers and sisters, there's one undeniable truth that I have learned in my personal life and in my ministerial life, and that is that the essence of God never changes. Amen. 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 God reveals his glory, brothers and sisters. Yes, he does. He reveals it every single day. Yes, he does. God's unchangeable truth is displayed every day. It is. It really is. Because early in the morning, God shows his glory through the rising of the sun. Every night, God shows his glory through the glory and the light of the moon. Uh, every morning that we wake up, we can inhale and we can exhale. That means we are alive and not dead. That's glory of God. Healing a wounded and broken heart is a miracle, and it is the glory of God that works in us. So my task tonight, as we exit 2022, Headed into 2023 is to share an inspiring message about God's love and his healing power. Y'all listen to me closely here. Some may believe or some may not believe. The choice is ours. Mm -hmm. But we will never know how important the Lord is mm -hmm. until we all realize he's all we have. Mm -hmm. So tonight I want to offer you the same restoration message that the prophet Jeremiah shares with God's covenant people, Israel. He says here again, lastly, he says, Heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Mm -hmm. Save me, and I will be saved. 
For you are the one I pray. Mm -hmm. And as we lay our 2022 experiences on the table, what will we do in 2023? Mm -hmm. Do our churches have a, uh, a lot of carnage left behind to clean up? Yeah, we got a lot of carnage behind to clean up. Yes, we do. And the answer is there must be a change. The answer is yes. So when we cease to assemble ourselves in the church to give God praise, when you stop coming to church to give God praise, what are you going to do? Or will we trust that the same God who protects us in the shopping malls, yeah, you do go to shopping malls, that the same God who protects us in the doctor's office, yes, most of all of us have been to the doctor, and the grocery store, and I know all of us have been to the grocery store, Amen. will you trust that the same God who protects us in those venues is the same God mm -hmm. that undoubtedly will protect us in his sacred place called the church? I can't understand, brothers and sisters, why people tell me or people suggest to me that the reason they don't come to church is because they don't want to catch coronavirus. Amen? Well, I would trust the church, which is hallowed to God, mm -hmm. and trust in any other venue, so why don't you come? Mm -hmm. Why don't you make 2023 your choice to come to church? Amen. Will we continue to make excuses and fail to realize that God is watching us, fail mm -hmm. to realize that God is listening to us, and fail to realize that God is documenting it. He's writing it all down. Has the, has the pandemic exposed our faith in God? Mm -hmm. All of these years, brothers and sisters, all of these many years, we have prayed together in church. We have laughed together in church. We have cried together in church. We have ministered to others in church. We have sang together. We have testified together. Where is your faith now? Have we misplaced it? Have we sold it? Have we dropped it? Where is your faith in God that you had before the pandemic? You got to stop making excuses, brothers and sisters, because God is watching, God is listening, and God is writing it down. Is he not the same God we served before the pandemic? Y'all listen to me closely. Only we can determine what our church and society will look like in 2023 and beyond. Let's decide together, you and I, pastor and parishioners, pastor and covenant partners, mm -hmm. let us decide together that this is an excellent opportunity to get closer to the Lord. Every other thing in life uh, offers no absolute security. So why not give God a chance in your life? I understand giving up the routine that we usually do every day is risky business for some. But what has it accomplished during this time we are experiencing today? That's why, brothers and sisters, I've said to Mount Calvary so many times in my teaching, I said to my church so many times in my preaching, we should not put our hope in temporary things that's here today and gone tomorrow. You can't put your trust in money. You have it today, the doctor take it the next day, or the bill collector. Amen. You have your cars today, can have an accident tomorrow, God forbid. You put your hope in people, and sometimes people let us down. So why not give God a chance in 2023? Mm -hmm. Listen, I'll say this lastly to you, and then we'll pray. Our social media platform has been a blessing for our ministry. Amen. We thank God for the three years of our social media platform. Amen. But we realize that watching a fireplace burning on Facebook can't keep us warm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even under safety protocol of wearing our mask at Mount Calvary, and doing our temperature church, uh, uh, checks at Mount Calvary, we come together to experience the warmth of fellowship. Don't you miss it? Don't you miss coming to church, sitting beside your brothers, sitting beside your sisters, singing together, laughing together, preaching and teaching together, you know, hanging out together at church? That's the fireplace of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
In 2023, our hope in the church and in our personal lives should be guided by the word of God. Why should it be guided by the word of God, you may ask, as we journey in 2023? It's because the earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot give. So if you never prayed to God before, do it now. If you never believed in God before, do it now. If you want to experience the power of what God can do, keep your eyes open and your ears tuned in 2023. If you want to know what it's like to be saved, tonight is your opportunity. Why? Because there's healing in a time like this. And we want to wish you Happy, happy New Year. Amen. There are so many of our people uh, and people that share with us, uh, they stand in the need of prayer. I've talked to many of our members. I've had a chance to call them on the phone and visit them, even the ones who lost loved ones, to encourage them that God is able to heal. God is able to heal a wounded spirit. I've even prayed for people I don't even know to let them know that we love them, but God loves them even the more. So if you know somebody, and I'm looking at my Facebook right now, if you know somebody that stands in the need of prayer, please type, type it in. You can stand in the gap uh, for a loved one. You can stand in the gap for uh, a coworker, uh, somebody in your community. Even for your enemies, pray for your enemies. Pray for those, Jesus says, who despitefully use you. Pray for everybody. We all stand in the need of prayer. We can't be devoid of prayer as we go into 2023. Amen. So you can type their name in. And if I don't call every name, it's fine, because I'm going to put all of you in this big old prayer pot. And we're going to pray together. Amen. We get ready to walk into 2023. What are you going to do? Are you going to do the routine? Or are you going to do something different? The choice is yours. Amen. Amen. Give you opportunity. Amen. The Massey and Hyatt families will pray. Let me give you a few more minutes. Amen. A few more minutes. I know pastors um, looking on Facebook. I'm not a singer, but today this song has just been ringing in my head. So when you're when we're done tonight, I don't know what you all are going to do, but I'm probably going to go back to playing my song and listening to it. Um, Lord, you've been so faithful. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way. How you turned my darkness into day. And again, that song has just been ringing in my head today. If I had a thousand times, I couldn't think of enough. 2022 was certainly a trying year, a year that we've never seen before. But through it all, I still have joy. Through it all, I'm still going to praise him because he's still the same God, even in the midst of the pandemic. And he's kept us. So I just wanted to say that. Yes, we have uh, the Hill family, uh, my sister Sherry, uh, my mother. We're praying for my mother. She wasn't feeling too well today, but I'm praying mm -hmm. for mom. I'm praying for the Sanders family. And this is the time I need Thomas and uh, Brother Sanders to come on over here. Sister Ava, if you watch it, uh, Brother Sanders to sing that song. If I had Thomas and uh, Brother Anthony here, they could sing Patricia's song. Because so. <laughs> I'm not here going to try to think. <laughs> we want to pray for the Turner family, Amen. Uh, the Brown family. We want to pray for the Lewis and Rayner and the Vaughn family. Offer a uh, prayer to God for you. Uh, we want to pray for Brittany and Tarvis uh, Brinson. Uh, 
that's the daughter, I think that's the daughter and the son-in-law of uh, Deacon Joe Hill and Deaconess Amanda Hill. We want to mm -hmm. offer prayer for them. We want to pray for uh, Deacon Faison uh, and his daughter Sissy. We mm -hmm. offer prayer to God for you. We know God is able to do um, mighty, mighty things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Give you a few more minutes and then I will ask you to bow with me in prayer. And then we'll give you the benediction and then we look forward to seeing all of y'all at church on Sunday morning, every last one of you, uh, on church on Sunday morning, and that will be Amen. our beginning of 2023. So, I want to continue to pray for those families that um, have lost loved ones this year. The Shadding family, uh, the Powell family, the, the McLean family, the Davis family, the Davis family, the McPherson family. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. We want to continue to to pray for all of those families, the Kelly family. The Murphy family. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And all of you that are, may have lost loved ones that uh, we can't call by name, but we know that God is a healer. Yes. And so as the requests continue to come, I'm going to ask that you would, wherever you may be, wherever you're located, just stop for a minute Amen. and just have your quiet time with the Lord. Amen. This is very important. We get ready to journey to 2023, but we can't make it without the power of God. Amen. So just for a moment, uh, I want you to bow with me in prayer. Uh, just turn everything off and let's concentrate on heaven, Amen. you know, on the things that are above. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, Father, I, we thank you for this moment of prayer. Yes, sir. Father, we thank you because so many would love to bow their heads and close their eyes mm -hmm. and pray God, but they're not able to do it. Yes. So, Father, we stand in the gap for everyone. Yes, Jesus. Every name that was listed here. Yes, Lord. God, we ask that in the name of Jesus, name Jesus. you would work a miracle, yes. a jaw-dropping miracle yes, in their lives. Yes. Father God, whatever they need, yes. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would bless them right now. Yes, Lord. Father, you know what they needed before they even requested it. Yes, 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 yes. So, Father, honor their faithfulness to you Jesus. and grant them their heart's desire. Yes, Lord. If they're praying for a loved one that's sick, heal the sick. Yes, Jesus. If they're praying for a child, God, bless their children. Yes, Lord. Bless their co-workers, God. Mm -hmm. Bless their husbands and their wives. Touch them, God, yes, touch Jesus. with your power, the Holy Ghost power, Yes. The power that can wake up the spiritual dead. Mm -hmm. The power that can open up the blinded eyes. The power that can yes. heal the wounded spirits. The power yes. that can bring uh, loved ones and children back home. The power that can set the captives free, God. Mm -hmm. With that power, Father, we need you. Yes. We need that power not only in our personal lives. We need that power not only in our personal homes, but we need your power in the church, God. Yes, Lord. In the church of the living God, when it seems as though people have forgotten who, who brought them this far. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they seem to have thrown you to the side, God. But God, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yes, Lord. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would keep the churches, not only in Mount Calvary, but keep churches all over the land and country. Yes. Keep the churches together again, Please God. Do, Jesus. Yes, Father Lord. God, we just thank you, God, thank you, Lord. that you have given us the ability to pray, that yes. you have given us the ability to call on your yes. holy and your righteous name. And God, we got to be so careful how we do it, Father. Yes. Father, because we're standing on holy ground. And Father, when we stand on holy ground, we have to take off our everyday shoes, our, yes. our everyday routine, God. We have to stand before you, God, and we got to strip it all off, God, and lay prostrate before you, God. Yes, Lord. Uh, prostrating ourselves, God, before a holy God, mm -hmm. just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for the ability to see this wonderful New Year's Eve. Yes, Lord. And God, we're about ready to say See you later so long, God, but we're about to journey into a, a unknown territory, Father. Yes, Lord. But Father, that's why we declare that the Lord is our shepherd. Yes, he is. We shall not want that the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Yes, God, we walking into 2023 knowing that yes. no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Mm -hmm. God, we're walking in 
to 2023, remembering what the Lord promised us, that he would yes. never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, Lord. We're walking into a new year knowing that Jesus says, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. Yes, and Father God, we trust in that. Yes, Lord. God, we bear witness to that. So we thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that we have experienced. Yes, we lay it Lord. all on the table now, Lord. Yes, Jesus. And God, uh, we want to lay it on the table, God, so we can wipe our hands clean of it, Lord, and, and walk into a, a new and an anointing day. A new day. Yes, In 2023. Yes, Jesus. And God, as we head into our church worship experience tomorrow, from our church school to our worship experience, God, let that be a time of Uplifted hands, God. Let it be a time of singing songs that we've never sung before. Yes. Preaching the word and inspiring message of God. Fellowshipping together with kindred minds. Mm -hmm. Father God, send an anointing, God. Yes, Lord. That breaks every yoke of people being disappointed. Send the yoke, God, that breaks the yoke of people being uh, despondent, God. Uh, feeling worthless, God. God, yes. send an anointing, God, where we can yes. help yes. those who are who are in need, Father, the yes. children and the men and women that are hungry and poverty, God. Mm -hmm. Still an anointing, God. So we may recognize, God, yes. that because you have been good to us, we ought to yes. show your goodness to others yes. who are less fortunate than we are. Mm -hmm. And if you do that for us, Father, mm -hmm. we'll be so careful to give your name, the praise, the mm -hmm. honor, and the glory. Mm -hmm. And to all those who stand in the need of prayer, yes. I, decree, I decree blessings upon you. In Jesus' name we Jesus pray. Name. Put your hands together all Amen. over the place, wherever you are, and give God the Amen. praise. Give God Amen. the praise. Amen. 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 I want to say this to you, um, those who um, have chimed in with us year, this year, and those who have watched us every Wednesday and <laughs> Friday afternoons and Amen. our worship on Sundays. Um, on our Facebook page, um, we're asking if our service and worship has been a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. And not only tonight, it's been a blessing to you. Why don't you go onto our Facebook page and you can give a donation to our ministry. Amen. All you got to do is click on the title and you can give whatever the no donation the Lord uh, blesses you to give. Amen. Whatever the Lord blesses you to give. And, and bless the church of God here in Goldsboro, this branch of Zion. Amen. And God would definitely bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for watching us. We look forward to seeing y'all uh, tomorrow in church service. And I want to give benedictions and blessings. If leader lady has something that she wants to do, go ahead. She wants to do something. I know she wants to yeah. do something. So before we give the benediction, of course, we got us some little dress up stuff we want to do. Oh. Put on our gear here to wish you all a happy <laughs> new year. I still got kind of a big head I there. Know, like really huge. All right. So we're in our home. We just thought we would put on our little <laughs> dress up pops here to wish you all a happy, happy and a prosperous and a blessed happy new year. year. <laughs> happy new year from the Galman. <laughs> God bless y'all. Uh, y'all stay safe, and we'll see you tomorrow. We love y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, oh, I forgot to get a benediction. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> now may the Lord keep thee and guide thee, and may his face shine upon you and give you peace. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with you until we see you again. In Jesus' name, and the church of God said amen. 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 Happy New Year. Happy New Year.